cerebrovascular accident. An adventure in bed. How? How did I got there? Possibly this was the underlying question to start solving everything. So this is what I remember. I came back to my country from Canada, where I was doing the PhD degree at the University of Toronto. I lived there around six years studying plant molecular development in the plant model Arabidopsis. At the time it was the most fulfilling experience in my professional life. I agreed with my supervisor to finish writing in my country of origin, then go back to Canada, to have the defense of my thesis. I had tons of data and images that had to be processed and ordered to fit in the document before the defense. The hard drive containing about 4 gigabytes of data crashed. Six months of work were lost. I unplugged the drive and sent it to a recovery service. They said it was beyond their repair capabilities. They could send it to the U.S., where the hope of repairing it was slim, but this path was not affordable for me, and I had to pay whether the information was recovered or not. It was a death end. Giving up on the hard drive. On a Thursday, I started to do the lost work again. On Friday night I had a big argument with the family. Saturday came. 7.25 a.m. I woke up with a funny feeling, like I was tired. It was all over my body, especially my neck and head. 7.40 a.m. The morning shower was on schedule early. 7.50 a.m. Everything was going as usual. An acute headache started. I cried for help. My wife came down to help me out of the bathroom. At that point, the headache worsened. 7.55 a.m. My eight-year-old boy wanted to know what was going on. Behind him, my six-year-old daughter was showing up. I told my wife I did not want them to see me and sent her to take them away and tranquilize them. 8.05 a.m. My wife's mother came to. She ordered to call the emergency line. My wife did it and replied the ambulance was not available to come for me. 8.10 a.m. At this point the headache was pretty much unbearable. I tried to drink orange juice and throw it up shortly after. 8.25 a.m. My mother-in-law went out to look for an ambulance and ordered my wife to call another doctor. 8.27 a.m. I was in the floor screaming with pain, trying to answer the doctor's question my wife was repeating for me, failing miserably at that. Then he asked her about my ability to speak. He concluded I was having a brain stroke. I needed an ambulance as soon as possible, he said. 8.50 a.m. My father was coming. Thankfully we had an appointment to have a family breakfast that day. 9.05 a.m. My father was trying to decide whether he was to take me to the hospital in his own car when my mother-in-law came with the ambulance. 9.10 a.m. They placed me into the ambulance, which seemed really small at the time. I was screaming to the full capability of my body. The paramedic asked me to stop it. I answered. I could not. He replied. I had to do it for them to be able to help me. I did my best to overcome the pain and stop screaming. He started to make all kinds of questions. What is your name? He asked. I gave him my name. And the weekday. What's today's date? Where are we? I answered to each question and started thinking. He is worried about my brain functions. But why is he asking all this question? Are they really necessary? After all my wife is coming with us. Is he keeping me busy? What for? 9.20 a.m. Everything faded out. I stopped listening and feeling anything. Everything was okay at that point. Then I died. I saw nothing. No light. No hallway. No sublime experience. Other than peace. Basically nothing.